Welcome to week 16 of Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason and on tonight's show we have crucial matches at both the top and the bottom of the tables. All the action from Holcomb against Clifton Robinsons, Loughborough at home to East Grinstead and 4th place Buckingham against 5th place Beeston. In the men's Premier Division we've got all the action from Holcomb at home to Reading, Beeston against Wimbledon, Hampstead and Westminster versus the University of Exeter, Brooklyn's Manchester University's trip to Surbiton and two matches from Old Georgians as they hosted East Grinstead and then Beeston. Holcomb hosted Clifton Robinsons with both sides level on points. Although both sides would have started the season with playoff ambitions, they are both now just two points ahead of the relegation playoffs, so a win for either side would be vital. Free hit by Ogilby, looking for the deflection of Thomas and it's back for McCauley and it is a Holcomb ball. Thomas getting the touch in there and Rose Thomas makes the save. Or fired forward and it's picked out Richards now a chance here for Richards and Holcomb to open the scoring Richards into the circle and Richards is denied by De Visser. and Hopkinson clears Richards perhaps just ran a little too straight didn't really move the ball and De Visser makes the save Wilkinson being turned over by Lane and Mark Jones up to Richards. Richards peeling away. Good work by Richards. Phoebe Richards as she goes down. Puts it past Rose Thomas. And Clifton Robinsons have the lead 14 minutes in. Well found by Mark Jones. Richards had a lot to do. She had Trunks for company. Trunks loses her stick. And as Richards goes down, she fires across Thomas. Ogilvy. Touched by McEwen. Here is Crookshank. Free hit. Crookshank takes quickly. She has McEwen to her right. Here is McEwen. McEwen. That's behind Crookshank. But here is Wilkinson. Wilkinson into the circle. And here an opportunity. Penalty corner coming. Lewis with the touch. Levisa giving away the penalty corner. Wills on the right. Trunks on the left. It's going to be Wills. Wills with a slap. And Wells has equalised. 30 minutes in, Alice Wells with her third goal of the season makes it Holcomb 1, Clifton Robinson's 1. Thought this ball had been pushed too far into the circle, but credit to Wills. She got it on target and scores. Here is uh, down this right hand side goes Webb. On back by Davison. This is Jones. Jones looking for Davison and Webb has won it back. Opportunity here into the circle it comes. This is Burton and a penalty stroke has been given. Penalty stroke for Holcomb as Webb plays it in. Let's see if we can see why it's given. Burton about to pull the trigger and I think it's Bingham who gives it away. Claire Tamos against Rose Thomas and it's Rose Thomas in the goal who comes out on top. Plunging away to her left hand side right on the end of that left hand glove Bingham drops it to Wilkinson Wilkinson firing it forward little bobble and a chance for Lewis let's have another look As Wilkinson fires it in gets a little bobble off Hopkinson's stick and there is Lewis onto the sideboard Wilkinson weighing up her options We've got plenty of time Goes down the line, takes a touch but finds Jones. Jones, little lift over the stick, still going Jones. Jones into the circle and coming is Lewis. And half cleared by Jones and McEwen. Sarah Jones into the circle. Was that lifted but there was Lewis arriving fast. And McEwen couldn't get the reverse stick shot away. Davison to McEwen. McEwen, and that's been turned over and a chance here for perhaps a, a counter-attack for Clifton Robinson. Here is Claire Thomas on the halfway line. Plays the ball back in field. They've got numbers here, Clifton Robinson, if they can find it. Here is McCauley. McCauley! And Thomas comes to make the save. And Holcomb do get it clear. Lovely ball in field from Claire Thomas. And... This is the right pass. McCauley in space makes Rose Thomas make the save. Here's Wills. Wills in traffic. 
And Wills loses out. Chapel with Richards to her left. Here is Richards, the goal scorer. Richards into the circle. She's lost control, but Chapel and uh, the save is made. And the penalty corner is given. Chapel gets the shot away. And ball lofted up over the top. And uh, a good opportunity here for Burton. Burton, oh, just mishandles with the first touch. And it's behind. Here is the opportunity. Burton, one-on-one. -on -one. There's the missed touch. And that allows Rose Thomas to make the save. Westwood. Well, that's loose. And that could be the last chance for either side. As the balls restart, that is the final whistle. Well, what a game we've had here. It ends all square. Holcomb won. Clifton Robinson's won. Loughborough went into their match against East Grinstead with an outside chance of still making the playoffs and did beat the visitors 5-1 earlier in the season. However, EG arrived on the back of a 12-match unbeaten run and had league top scorer Sophie Bray in their ranks. Palmer picks out Cousins. Here goes Cousins and the ball forward is a good ball. It picks out Howard. Howard into the circle. Shot is saved and there is Bray to put it in. Three minutes in, Sophie Bray makes it love for nil. He's Grinstead one. Chance here, perhaps, for Piers to get an equaliser for Loughborough. There's uh, Mitchell on her back. Can she get the cross in? She can, but it's uh, deflected out and picked up by Neil. Neil into the circle. little touch, and here's a great chance for Piers. Oh, she's put it wide. What a chance that was for Loughborough. Little touch from Cousins, and here goes a chance for Bray. Is it on the reverse stick? Oh, it's gone through the keeper and in. Oh, a disaster for Pritchard in the Loughborough goal. It's 2 0 East Grinstead. Rare on the left, Palmer on the right. It's going to be rare. Looking for the deflection from Bray. Pritchard's made the save. It's a re award. Close to a third there, East Grinstead. Raya on the left, Palmer on the right. It's going to be Raya. Raya with a drag flick. Does that take a little touch? It's gone through the legs of the keeper. And it is 3 0 now for East Grinstead. Picked up by Bray. Bray coming inside and oh, it's been taken quickly, the free hit, and a chance here perhaps for East Grinstead. Raya's free in the circle. Here she is, Ellie Raya. Pritchard makes the save. Where's that going to go? Still in there for East Grinstead. And then Rare gets her stick caught up and it's a free out. Winning possession back through Kilpatrick on that left-hand side. Kilpatrick finds Park. Now a bit of space on this right-hand side if they can find it. And here is Petta. Petta into the circle. Petta with the shot and she skews it wide. Chance again for Loughborough. Rare on the left as we look. Palmer on the right. And there's a switch. I'm looking for the deflection off Bray. And it's fallen for Nicholson. And Nicholson makes it four. 49 minutes in. Kathy Nicholson gets a fourth goal. This is Grieve to Piers. Oh, and under pressure. And it's been turned over. McDonald with the shot. Can she get the shot away? She can. Saved by Pritchard. Back into the danger zone. Still there for East Grinstead. It's still alive. And the shot is over the top. From Hansford. Penalty corner. Palmer on the left. Howard on the right as we look. Goes to Palmer. Oh, it's been switched now to Unsworth and deflected in by Tess Howard. A well worked penalty corner routine. Gives East Grinstead another goal. Into the circle it comes from Park. And Petter with the shot. It's still there. And that is somehow. Kept out by East Grinstead and they survive. Penalty corner once again for East Grinstead. Goes to the left hand castle. Shot comes in. It's still there as it comes across and Bray deflects it in for her third. A minute from time, her 21st of the season. 6 0 East Grinstead. Loughborough looking for the consolation. They're running out of time. 
and he squinced it getting it clear keep going to the end the hosts the final score is Loughborough nil. East Grinstead 6. A great result for the visitors. Buckingham hosted Beeston knowing that a win would all but book their playoff spot. Beeston on the other hand were another side looking below them as the relegation playoff position catches up on them. Two castles at the top of the D for Buckingham. And they look to work it back to the injector. Nice routine and it just can't be finished off. The ball blazing across the face of goal. Brilliant link-up play down the left-hand side. Abby Brandt causing problems again in the Beast and D. Newland trying to bring it under control and she can only find her foot. Wrong corner. Switch it over to the left-hand side. A big hit coming into the D. Well struck and it's bouncing around and it's fallen to a Beast and player. 1-0 to the Bees away from home and how vital could that goal be? for their bid to stay in the National Prem. Lovely word down the left hand side. Fantastic skills and great link up. The rebound just can't be turned home. Defence splitting pass. And Beeston are through. Shipley coming across to apply the pressure as the angle gets more narrow, still gets the shot away. Good save by Jackson and once more, Buckingham are able to clear their lines. Buckingham looking to reduce the deficit. Beeston still with that slender one goal lead. The ball's played in, good save. And it's an almighty scramble in front of the Beeston goal. Can they get it clear? Can Buckingham find a finish? And it's Beeston who come away from it incredibly. Again, Beeston back defending hard and maybe a chance to counter attack for the Bees. Alice Huddleston with some nice skills, seemingly taking on the whole Buckingham team here. Huddleston, still going Alice Huddleston onto a forehand, a good shot, Jackson away and once more Ella Jackson with a good save. Strong slap, good blocking from the PCD team, narrow angle, again it's, it's got my scramble and Nicholson, her slap is dragged wide of the post. Oh what a save, the touch off Shipley, the number one runner making a good save from Jackson, a great one. Buckingham again looking to work it to the injector. Good save. Beeston desperate to get this ball away. Desperate for those three points. Final seconds here. Can Buckingham find anything? It's fallen to a Beeston player. And the shot goalwards. That could have sealed it. And they may not even need it as the final few seconds tick away. And there is the final whistle. Beeston with a famous 1-0 win over Buckingham and it could be so significant going into the final fortnight of the season. Surbiton won away at Hampstead and Westminster by three goals to two. They raced into a two goal lead inside five minutes with goals from Hannah Martin and Eloise Stenner, but goals either side of half time from Fran Tew and Melanie Wilkinson levelled it up before Georgie Twigg's fourth of the season gave the visitors all three points. The final game of the weekend was Bowden at home to the University of Birmingham. A goal in each half for the visitors from Rosie Henderson and Lauren Hunt gave the student side a 2-0 win. Here's a look at the table. The top four look to be finalised, but below them there is just one point separating five sides in the fight to avoid the relegation playoffs. At the bottom, unfortunately Bowden's defeat means they're now relegated after 30 years in the top flight and were the last remaining member of the initial National League. Now to the men's Premier Division. We're back at Holcombe for the visit of Reading. The home side needed a win to keep their slim chance of sneaking into the top four by the end of the season. For Reading, they started the game four points behind ninth place, so a defeat could see them relegated. Banderak and Glaycourt swap castles. It goes to Glaycourt. Here's Banderak. Why with the save? And the second save, but then it falls kindly to Hayden Phillips, who makes it 1 0. Inside 11 minutes, Wyver with a couple of saves, both off Bandarak. The second one pretty good, but oh, when you're down at the bottom, those things happen. We start on the 23 for Reading. Out to this right-hand side, and comes the cross up off Trussler's stick. Oh, Middleton's let it bounce! 
And there's Oxford to level things up. 14 minutes in, Holcomb one, Reading one. As the ball gets played in, up off Trostler's stick and Middleton lets it bounce. And that's a fine finish from Oxford. Blake Horn. Back to Bray, a little mishandled, but plenty of time for Bray to get that back under control. Right, and to Trussler, back again to Bray. Patient play here by Holcomb. This is Edwards. Edwards, oh, now Trussler could be through on goal. Oh, Trussler has thrown it between the legs of Wyver. And Holcomb are back in front on the half-hour mark. They have plenty of time down this left-hand side. No pressure on the ball carrier, really. A little dink from Bray. Ball in by Edwards. Trussler, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he's threaded it through the legs. 2-1. Now, chance here, perhaps. Well, it's been dispossessed, and here is Banderak. Nice skill from Banderak. And Middleton. Now, plenty of space for Middleton down this right-hand side. O'Connor is on the goal line. Here is O'Connor. Good save by Wyver, but there at the far post is Phillips for his second of the game. And Holcomb lead by three goals to one. Again, quite a lot of time for Banderak to pick his pass. And well, Middleton in acres of space down the Holcomb right. And it's a clever ball to O'Connor. He plays it across. Wyver makes the save, but it falls to Phillips, who makes no mistake. Field with O'Connell snapping at his heels and O'Connell has won possession back for Reading. Now is this a chance for the visitors? There's Gittins in plenty of space. Gittins first touch not so good but his second and third touch is excellent. And Reading are right back in this one. 43 minutes gone. Holcomb 3, Reading 2. You can see Curtis trying to cut the angle down and in doing so actually just gets his angles a little wrong. And Gittins puts it in the goal. Penalty corner, Gleghorn on the right, Banderak on the left, and it's Gleghorn who fires it into the roof of the net. 4-2, Holcomb lead, 45 minutes gone, it's Stuart Lockery on the post, and up off his hip in fact, for the goal. Reading with time round the back, this is Ellison to Batu. Now a chance here on the reverse stick and here is Gittins once more and it's off the line. Can you believe it? By Gleghorn I think it is. As Batu plays it across. There's the touch from Gittins and Gleghorn somehow gets it away. Ball fired forward. Brotherton gets a touch but where's this going to fall? It's going to fall to O'Connor. O'Connor, oh, lovely bit of skill from O'Connor. O'Connor through, Wyver down, makes a save. Chance here, oh, back off the post and in. Oh, can you believe it? How cruel for Reading. 5-2 with 55 minutes gone. O'Connor, lovely bit of skill in the middle of the park to get through the Reading defence. Wyver makes the save. Can you believe it? Falls to O'Keefe. His shot comes in. Smith, who's backpedal, his touch hits the post and then it's almost turned around the post again. 5-2. Penalty corner again. It's Banderak and uh, Gleghorn. And Gleghorn roofs it for a sixth goal for Holcomb on the hour mark. Holcomb 6, Reading 2 from behind the goal. Oh, that's a cracking penalty corner from Mark Gleghorn. Reading. Perhaps there's a chance of a consolation goal. Down this right-hand side, O'Connell putting it in. To Faulkner. Faulkner! And Curtis. Good save. And Holcomb. Get it clear. O'Connell. Picking out Faulkner at the top of the circle. Shifts it to his right. And Curtis. Good save. Still in search. Of a, another consolation. But that is the final whistle. And Reading now in real trouble at the bottom of the table. Final score. Holcomb 6. Reading 2. Beeston hosted Wimbledon looking for revenge for a 2-0 defeat earlier on in the season. Let's join BTV for all the action in this one. Well won back by the visitors and well stepped in, kept in play just in front of the cameras. Adam Dixon races forward with the ball, is he going to go inside, he does, he's into the circle. 
Flicked in and oh. it is in. What a goal. Adam Dixon has given Beast the lead. <laughs> exactly the point we were making. Be prepared to run with it. Obviously, Adam Dixon is quite capable of doing that. But that little lifted finish into the uh, roof of the net, great to see. And it's all because of this work rate and the connections there. Good pickup from Adam Dixon. Wimbledon will come back strongly for sure. That's uh, without any doubt. Mikey Hall lofts the ball. It's taken down. Strong run. That's another good save. Low to the goalkeeper's right. Simon Hushwan on the penalty corners for Wimbledon. Plus his law of three. Might yeah. come into play here. Baller to the left of the centre. He strikes the ball. And it is saved. It's still not out of danger. The umpire is right on it here. Penalty corner, number three. Number three, this is the worrying one. Baller again with a slip ball out to the left-hand side. And he's saved by Hujwan, still live though. And that is corner. number four. Beeston pressure comes on a bit. I'd like to see that a little bit more aggressive from Richard there. I think he can put that player under more pressure. As it happens, they've just played around you know, those two forwards. And here's a shooting opportunity for Wimbledon. And that is yeah. the equalising goal. Yes, well, I mean, it's been coming, really, to be honest. And um, these high Wimbledon players have had a lot of space. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, that's hard to defend. And there's the equaliser just before half-time. Indeed, uh, Ben Francis, we believe, is the goal scorer. Space here for Elliot Barton. He needs to put that somewhere dangerous. And it is in the circle. There's a shooting chance here. And that and is a second. A super goal. Sam Apula. Sam Apula with the <laughs> goal. Terrific effort from him. Just how what a response from Beeston. Absolutely. I mean, probably within the same minutes, is it that? Or uh, it's gonna be very close. close. Sam Apula first league goal of the season. Big levers, I think the phrase is. Yes. Bit of a shuffle to the right. It's not going to be Hauler. It is, and that's another strong save from Simon Hojwan. And I'm sure, given the conditions, it's not good to look into the sky because the sun, when it is out, is very bright. It's a play on the right hand side for Wimbledon, looking to find a route through towards the circle. A lot of beast of players trying to block the way, looking for that ball across the face of goal. Hojwan involved again. Will Eyes is down. So you have to look at the uh, just a moment here. Loose in the circle. And that is the equalising goal for Wimbledon. They have done it. You see ben Arnold is the goal scorer. Yeah. I mean, we're just saying, weren't we, how much care is needed to take this ball away. And the, and the pass that led to this restart, so unnecessary. Let's see what it can do this time. I suspect it will be number 15. It's going towards. It's not. It's Hauler. And that's another terrific low save from Simon Hush. One of the Beeston Great goal. save, yeah. Beeston 2, Wimbledon 2. You are watching BTV. An enthralling game here on a Saturday Just afternoon. Look at that man there. In the circle again. Wimbledon go. That's a slide towards the goal. It's still live. Hush one out with the pads. That's understanding that this will be the final play of the game. So, at the very least, it'll be Wimbledon 2 on the score sheet. Will it be Beeston 3? Dixon, low. It's been tapped in for a winner from Beeston. What about that well, right at the end? <laughs> again, I can't believe that. <laughs> Dixon, low. And then tapped in by 22 Samapula Sam for his second, second of the game. Brilliant. Terrific. Will we restart? We do restart. Well, and that is the final the whistle. Cheers Wonderful. around. And Beeston 3, Wimbledon 2 is the final score. What about that? Two <laughs> weeks in a row. This Excellent. never happens here, but it's <laughs> happened twice in a week. It has. Having won two of their last three matches, the University of Exeter went to Hampstead and Westminster hoping to pull off a shot. However, the home side were unbeaten in seven games and they bested Exeter 4-1 in November. Exeter 
Looking to play out from the back through Hooper. He's got a booming aerial on him, but he keeps it on the floor. Down to the left half, and now into Duncan Scott, the extra captain. Oh, lovely skills from Scott and the vision to play in Kieran Patel. What a finish from Kieran Patel. That is one of the best goals you will see. Duncan Scott with the skill, and Patel applies the finish. Shipley. I'm not sure that was the correct castle. Quan Brown somewhat dragged, pushes it goalwards. And Sam French there to scoop home the rebound. Oh, powered into the D. And chance for a shot. Good save from Seager Green. There's Kelly. Right into the top corner. Top bins from Josh Kelly. And he puts Hampson and Westminster ahead. Rain begins to fall. A bit more intensities. Exeter break down the left hand side and a powerful shot across the goal from Reese Bradshaw. Draws Exeter University level with last year's champions. Guys Brown, that's more like it. From Hampstead and Westminster back to their traditional four castles and with a traditional result. The guys Brown penalty corner goal. Straight from the restart. High pressure from Hampstead and Westminster. Hooper dealing with it by carrying out from the back. One touch. Hockey down the left hand side for the students. And a scorcher into the bottom corner from Charlie Taylor. Brilliant from X to University from one end of the pitch to the other. Ball played in. Sam French with a touch. And I think it's been given as a long corner. The umpires will deliberate. And goal is awarded. Brilliantly taken down from Harry Martin. Looking to link up down the baseline. Martin can't quite get his shot away. He leaves it for French. Who brings up his hat trick in the first half with a flick past Seager Green. Eight goals in the first half. 5-3 Hampson and Westminster. Exeter University looking to play out from the back. Dangerous stuff and they've been robbed at left half. Touch in front of the final defender and smashed home by Will Calnan. Hard and true into the roof of Seager Green's net. Flies past Quan Brown's face. And that might be all from this game. A thrilling nine goal match. Hampson and Westminster win. Tabletop of Surbiton hosted Legally, Brooklyn's Manchester Surbiton. University, Welcome knowing that a win would guarantee them the league title and a spot Hockey in Europe Club, next year. The For the Manchester side, win they'll win in six and see them slip into the relegation the playoff spot. Pulled forward by Taylor, stopped at the edge of the circle, and the whistle has gone for a free hit to Surbiton. Forsyth stands over the ball, takes it quickly and drives from right to left, gets the ball back now. Here's a chance perhaps for Surbiton and there is Ben Boone to open the scoring 16 minutes in. Surbiton 1, Brooklyn's nil. Penalty corner. Taylor on the left, Williamson on the right goes to Taylor. Taylor goes low and Taylor doubles the lead. Two minutes later, it's 2-0 Surbiton. Ball down that left-hand side. Forsyth comes to offer. Forsyth. Well, nice work from Forsyth. Still going. Alan Forsyth. Can he finish from the acutest of angles? Yes, he can. 3-0. Three, Three goals in five minutes. Penalty corner. Peter Flanagan on the left. And he's going to take the flick. And it's Sawsby off the line. Penalty corner. Taylor nearest to us. Here he is. And Taylor goes high. And Taylor makes it 4-0. An absolute ripper from Luke Taylor. Penalty corner. Again, Taylor on the castle. Here is to us. It's Taylor once more. And it's almost a carbon copy of the previous goal. Taylor makes it 5 0. Oh, a little deflection that falls kindly to Surbiton. And here is Forsyth, all unmarked in the circle. And Alan Forsyth, if you give him that much time and space, will punish you. And it's another goal to Surbiton. 6-0, they now lead. Penalty corner. Guess that it's uh, Taylor on the nearest castle to us. Last couple have gone up high. This one goes low. 
And this one still ends up in the back of the net. 67 minutes gone. Serves in seven. Brooklyn's nil. Well, time running out. There's there to be a consolation for Brooklyn. Either way, it is a result that will see Surbiton qualify top of the table and have home advantage in the playoffs. Final score. Uh, Surbiton get it clear. Surbiton 7, Brooklyn's nil. Now we go to Old Georgians as they host the East Grinstead. The home side went into this in a poor run of form, having failed to win in any of their previous four games but would look back on their 5-0 victory over EG earlier in the season as a measure of their talent. So Surbiton have now secured the league title for the second year running. They will be joined in the playoffs by Hampstead, Wimbledon and Old Georgians. At the bottom, Reading are in real trouble, but they do play Brooklands next week, whilst the University of Exeter and East Grinstead will be looking over their shoulders. That's it for this week. Join us next week for the penultimate Monday Night Hockey of the season.